For this sculpture that I'm going to be working, actually for the next series of sculptures, I'm going to be using this. This is not the same red clay that I used for the pre previous stuff. This is water-based clay, but this clay has got grog. And grog has got like some little silica particles in the clay body that help in the firing process and it dries a little bit better. And it still has, I believe it's got less shrinkage than the the clay without with grog without grog it's still red but this it's a little bit hard to see but if you were to run your finger through there's like these little minute bits of silica in there or in sand and it's mixed in and it's basically like fired bits of clay that help the firing process so if you're a beginner this clay is a lot better because it doesn't crack or blow or um, in the kiln it's much easier to fire. So this is the clay I'm going to be using and the project we're going to be working on today is... So this is the pose that I'm going to be using. What I have now for instead of a computer, I'm looking for a computer to buy so I can use as reference, but this is what I use. It's an Amazon uh, Fire tablet. And this pose I got from Female Anatomy for Artists.com. They're a little bit pricier than Pose Space, but I think they're pretty darn good. And this is the pose. So I really like the pose from the rear. From Pose Space, they do have good models, but there's the ones that they have here are amazing. Like that's an amazing pose. And that's a very sculptural pose. There are poses that you might want to shy away from. If you're doing, uh, I mean, this is an excellent pose to do as a sculpture because it's a triangle, you're sitting, so it doesn't have the complexity of dealing with the form holding up. So no standing poses, of course. Here's another really great pose. And for this, you do have the ability of kind of like zooming in. It's not as like high quality as pose space when it comes to reference. And I believe they only gave you eight photos per pose as opposed to post space that gives you like 20 per pose. But here's an, another amazing one. So this is one that I was like thinking about doing as well. We're gonna build a platform for the clay to rest. So that's gonna be this base. And then I'm gonna build a torso going up and you have to look at from various points of view. This part is not as good as that part. But you have to kind of understand what she's doing. She's leaning in and she has her weight to the right and she's counteracting with her head. So if you look at her head, it's actually a little bit more to the left. It's hard to see from here, but she's kind of like leaning and pushing her weight. So she's sitting on that right leg a little bit. Spray this down just so the clay sticks. A block of clay, I'm gonna push it down put all my weight on it like this. Just kind of flatten it out. Her foot is here. I can add a little bit more clay on each side if I want to increase the size of the sculpture.
the gesture almost done, there are some things that are troublesome to me. So one of the things you should do is take lots of measurements. And as I'm sculpting this, I realize that my measurements are a little bit off. That is, I'm giving her too much torso and I'm trying to correct that. So if you take a measurement, say from uh, right about here to the front of the patella, and what I do is I'll just take one of these sticks. That should lead, put you in the acromion. So it's almost there. Actually, this is, this is where the acromion is. So currently it's about right, but I still think it's a little bit off. Yes, yeah, it's a little bit off. The acromion is right here. So often you should take these measurements as a sculptor. When you think about the human head, you could actually take the human head and kind of like figure out where things are. For example, the bottom of the chin to the top of the head, not where the hair is, is say from the acromion process to the end of the elbow, the old cranon. And you can take those head measurements throughout the entire figure and figure out the measurements. Now, I'm not really concentrating on the face or anything. I am more interested in establishing the gesture in the beginning because it is a really beautiful uh, pose, especially from the back. When I'm looking at the pose from the back, I try and draw with my tool where I think the spine is. And one of the things I try and do is establish this very nice C curve. It's like a reverse C curve and you often find this um, Art is talking about this and so when it comes to the head she's actually kind of going this way so there is an S curve in addition to the C curve of the spine so if I look at it straight it looks flat but if you look at it from here it looks like it's curved and you can exaggerate this a little bit to add a little bit more uh, dynamic to the pose it'll become a little bit more uh, as if it's moving so when you look at the way she, she's sitting. So you have the pelvis here. It's like almost a box. But you should look for landmarks. The posterior iliac spine, which is these two little dots here. On some models, very like usually female models, you'll have two dips here. Usually when they have additional fat, and it's also genetic, some women, this little two dots here, that is really where the pelvis is so it's the iliac crest and then you have the sacrum here which is very nice on this pose and you want to exaggerate this this actually goes in quite a bit like that and so you can start to develop these shapes but and of course where she's sitting the this cheek is going to be kind of coming out it's not going to look like this one because this one's in the air she has her weight on that right cheek so it's kind of like making everything a little bit wider. And then you get up here, you see the flank pad, you have the erector spinae very obvious, uh, very evident. And as you start to move up, there are some things that you need to start indicating. One is the medial portion of the scapula. So on this scapula, it is directly like this, almost vertical. And on this one, it is this way. So because the arm, is a little bit further in. She has this arm going this way, so that means that this medial portion is actually gonna be kind of coming out a little bit more. So you can just redraw that. And you do have the erector spinide muscle, very evident here and very evident here. Those are things we'll concentrate as we finish up the gesture. Another thing to note is that you want to take a measurement, and I think on mine it's becoming a little bit wide, is from here to here, you want to measure it vertically. So if I do that on, on mine, you'll actually like end up here. So for me, this might be something, yeah, it's a little bit too wide. So what I'm going to end up doing is removing a little bit of this. And the way I do it is like I do it really kind of like very fast and you can tell like this is becoming a little bit too too thick and she is uh, very very young so generally the hips are going to be a little bit thinner and not wide 
But these are just like things that you have to do as you're establishing the gesture. And as I move with the figure, you have to kind of realize that the arm is kind of going in. This shoulder blade is going to move within her rib cage as she moves her arm forward. It's very important. And as it gets here as well, this is going to be a little bit flatter. And the clay I'm using, of course, is the grog clay. And I, I am finding it is a very decent clay to use. So from this vantage point, remember, we're going to cut a little bit off here. The hat is also a little bit too high up. So I'm going to just remove a little bit of this. And kind of move this part down. And that's as easy as it is. You just kind of like remove and chuck things out. So this leg, this thigh is higher up. One of the things I am kind of trying to figure out with this company that I'm using, it's called Female Anatomy for Artists. They don't give you a lot of reference of the model and it would be nice to get a vantage point from the top so you can tell where things are. Another thing I'm doing here is I realize that this part is a little bit too thin. So before I put everything away, I just kind of want to establish all the digestural stuff. And another thing to note is that the hair on this sculpture, it comes and it actually hides this right breast and try to figure out where it is. So the end of that hair is actually going to establish here, but it's going to be a additional support for your sculpture. Generally with sculptures, uh, this sitting pose you would have needed and you could make, you know, a call, an artistic call if you want the hair to be going all the way down. But I do like it. So the hair comes down all the way to here. So I'll bring it down almost like it comes out kind of far. It's going to add weight, but it's also going to create some structure, structure rigidity to the sculpture. Right about here is the neck, draw a line down and see if her belly is a little bit too wide and I think it is. So I'll probably just scrape a little bit off. And this thigh is giving me quite a hard time. Um, you know, the way she's sitting, putting weight on here, that means that the femur is like slightly going up like this. And I think even now, this line that I just made is a little bit too much. It's subtle, you know, this, um, these poses you would think are easy to do, but the easier, less subtle poses are oftentimes the hardest because they require you to really carefully look at things. From this vantage point, one of the things I like to do is use one of these sticks and I'll kind of light it up to my humerus and my radius and I'll see if the angle at least is right. And if it is, I'll just keep moving. The legs are a little chunky. I'll have to resolve that. The hair is going to be brought down. One thing that you don't want is to get this head to be too, uh, too big, you know, like the, and I think and another thing that's happening, I think it has to go more to the left. And as the clay is so wet, you can still move it around, but it's very important to kind of don't get caught in with your uh, sculpture. And if you do lean it more to the right, it does give a little bit more interest to the sculpture. Because remember, in the back, you have this nice curve, but it is nice to have an opposition of the, the head going this way. And that way you have like the S curve of the human body, which is essentially the spine. So, this is the beginning stages of the sculpture. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm going to see you in the next video. If you have any comments, post in the comments below and I'll try and answer them.